All right, I have Joseph Holmes back on the show who picked up a round two RNC at Dana White's Contender Series this past Tuesday. Joseph, how are you? Hey, Ryan. Thanks for having me, brother. Yeah, I'm glad to have you back on. And you know, as we were talking a little bit before we went live, I mean, I, I know a win, especially a finish on Contender Series, is the goal, right? But the end goal is to get a contract. And a lot of people, including myself, thought that you did enough to get in there and get a contract. How, how confident did you feel after you got the win? Did you feel like you were a shoe win? Because Dana White's been like Oprah, giving away contracts left and right. You get a contract, you get a contract. So you must have felt pretty good about it, right? Uh, I felt great about my performance and I felt great about what I did and um, all the things I got to show my coaches because most of the things that I did in the fight were things that uh, my coaches and I talked about needing to do Kraus and Professor Slang saying so. I felt good about my performance. I wasn't necessarily confident I was getting a contract, but I'm super duper young. Like, it's not like I'm not getting a contract because I'm not ready. You know, I'm just not getting a contract just because, you know, I guess I don't have enough clout yet. You know, I should be a little more uh, more popular, a little more like demanding or like demanded by the fans and stuff. So I think that's kind of more the direction Dana was going with it. Uh, he said he wants me on his uh, looking for a fight show. Uh, that gets like a million views in a couple days, um, you know, and then even after just being on contender alone, I, I gained like at least 500 new followers on my social media outlets. So, yeah, it's all good. Yeah. And I mean, looking for a fight that that's a huge platform, as you just said, Dana actually came to my hometown a few years back of Bangor, Maine, and uh, there were some really good performances and, and brought a couple of people to the UFC there. As far as going into this fight, prepping for fighting in front of Dana White, Sean Shelby, Mick, and just the whole atmosphere at the Apex, what was that like? Because this is this is new for you. This is your first time fighting at the Apex, obviously. So me the mental side of it, how was that for you leading up to the fight? Oh, it was great. It, it felt super surreal, like, the entire time. Everything was, like, um, just like, wow, oh, my gosh, wow, you know? And uh, so it, it took me until I stepped into the uh, octagon, um, and then, you know, my opponent was like, hey, you want to shake hands? And I was like, yeah. And right when we decided to shake hands, for me, was the moment that things kind of like, okay, this is actually happening, you know? Um, before we got into the fight, in my head, I was like, you know, this is so amazing. Like, I, like, what if something happens? You know, like, what if the fight just doesn't happen? That's kind of more where I was thinking, like, the fight's just not going to happen. You know, this is too big for it to actually happen for me. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Was there ever a moment leading up to the fight where you kind of felt those added nerves? Did that ever cross your mind? Or, or, or are you confident and just ready to go in there and perform the whole time? Well, I mean, it felt the same, like, as far as, like, my nervousness to fight, you know, scared to get knocked out, scared to get choked out in front of all my people that, you know, care about me and stuff like that. No, I mean, I was still just as nervous um, for this one as I was for every other fight, but I feel like I'm always super nervous, um, especially before I make weight, you know. So once I make the weight, the nervousness kind of goes away a little bit, and it's a little more focused just because it's like, bro, you already made weight. You already struggled to do that. Like you're ready for a fight. If you can make that weight, you're ready to go in there and fight. So. So you went in there, you finished Shante Barnes in the second round. This is a, a veteran guy, a, a really great athlete. And, you know, I thought you looked really good doing it, man. What was the game plan going into Shante, uh, this fight against Shante? Uh, our game plan was to stay on the outside of that, of his lead right hand, uh, try and work my way to my left, uh, attack his liver, um, with with different like uh, different attacks, we had like a, we were trying to throw a right hand to his liver, which I, I, in the second round you could tell I kind of tried to do it. In the first, I wanted to, but I just didn't see the opening. Um, we wanted to attack a lot of head kicks um, and hurt his arms, get his arms low, um, and then just uh, get to work right away because I knew my my cardio was way better than his. I've went the distance. Uh, well, as an amateur, I went to distance a lot, and then as a pro, um, I, I just haven't really got tired yet, you know. So I'm, I'm normally the one pushing the pace, so I just knew my gas tank was way better than his. What did James Krause tell you after the first round going into the second round? How how did he feel you did in the first, and was there any specific adjustments that he wanted you to make going into round two? Uh, he, I do remember he was like, dude, you're doing great. He's like, just take a deep breath, and he's like, He's like, look, that lead hand needs to get going a little bit more. You're not, your lead hand's not going. Uh, but once you get that lead hand going, 
Uh, you're going to notice your right hand is going to be open. He's like, the head kick's working. Um, he's like, the head kick's working. And then he was like, you'll be able to take him down this round. He was like, you'll be able to reap that leg. Because I think in the first round, I tried to get the, <clears throat> the, the leg reap, which is just like the outside trip off the cage. I tried to get it a few times, and, and uh, Homeboy was pretty strong. Shantae, he was pretty strong uh, in his base. So, uh, crowd seen that I'd be able to get that in that, that second round for sure. And there was a lot made uh, about the head clash between uh, you guys because prior to that, uh, you know, obviously Kevin Holland and Kyle Dacus, uh, and Holland had a flash knockout. I mean, they clashed heads, Holland went out. He came back, you know, obviously started fighting. Dockett ends up getting the the, the RNC win. So I, I feel like with this fight in particular, the referee kind of had that in the back of his mind to make sure that you guys are both okay. Did, do you feel like that was the case? And did you automatically think of Holland and Dockett uh, when that happened? Or were you just too lasered into what was going on with your particular fight? I did not instantly think about them, like, in the octagon, like, when it happened. You know, in the octagon, I was a little more, I felt a little bit more bad for my opponent because... It hit my forehead, so I didn't really take damage from it. I thought I was cut, but it hit him right in the chin, you know. So I definitely didn't want to keep fighting right then. If he was hurt from that, I was willing to give him as much time as he needed after that headbutt. I don't know if you noticed, but as soon as it happened, I was like, oh, you know, like, oh, my bad. I was a headbutt. Oh, okay, you know, my fault. You know? But it was him coming forward anyway. After I watched it a few times, it was him. He came in with a like a two-punch combo, and I just had my hands up trying to, you know, put my head in his chest so um, I don't get hit by those. So, uh, did, did you think ultimately what happened with the no contest with Holland and Dacus is the right call? Like, if that happened in your fight, what what do you think the, the right, you know, protocols would be? I don't think it works that you make it a no contest. Like, it doesn't really make any sense. You let a fight go. Um, and then not even just let it go. Like, he recovered from it. You know what I'm saying? Like, and they continued fighting. So, for as... Like, if I were Kyle, I wouldn't be too happy that they made it a no contest just because, you know, the guy was fighting back. Like, what if he got choked out? What if Kevin came back and put him in a choke and choked him out? You know what I mean? Would they still call it a no contest or would they say that was fair because, you know, he got headbutt and the other one didn't? You know what I mean? So I definitely think they should have let whatever call that they, had, like, decided stick. Like, the referee decided to let the fight continue. So that, that should have been the call. But... I wasn't the one that went through it. So, you know, I, I just don't, I don't really, I don't really, it doesn't really make sense to me that, that it's a no contest after the fight was finished. Mm. You know? Yeah. Like, I feel like the ref could have still just stopped it even after they continued, you know, they could have been like, Oh, hold on one sec. You know, just like if a mouthpiece falls out, they let it, they let it stay out until there's a break in the action. You know what I mean? And that could have been the same way here in this case. Yeah, no doubt. I, I don't disagree with anything you said. I'm just glad that the UFC actually match made uh, this, this fight with Dawkins and Holland again. It's, you know, a few weeks from now. So I think the fans will win here in the end. Now, back to your fight, you know, run us through the finish, man. You got that RNC in round two. How did it come about? And uh, just for anyone that didn't see that doesn't have ESPN Plus, run us through ultimately how you got the finish. Uh, second round comes. Um, he lands a body kick on me, which it hit me on my arm. Most After the first body kick, he hit me in the first round, which landed really clean to my liver or just like right below my liver. I felt it in my stomach. Um, I started having my elbow a lot tighter, so I was starting to catch his kicks on my, on my elbow, um, which didn't hurt at the time. It hurts pretty bad now. But um, And then so in the second round, he, he goes for one of those. And it hits me on my arm, and I remember I was like, ah, I can't take any more of those. So I just grab him, put him against the cage. Um, and then I started going for that reap that Krause let me know would be open this round. So I, as soon as I reaped his leg, he, it gave, he gave it all to me. You know, and then the end of the end of the first, he was super tired anyway. It took him a while to get up. So um, I got his leg easily and then uh, just went for my uh, just regular leg reap. But this time when I outside tripped him off the cage – Instead of normally like how I'll end up like in half guard on top, because normally they fall to their back, he ended up turtling up uh, when I took him down. So I just popped right under his arm out the back door um, and I was on his back. So as soon as I got his back, I mean, I had one, I was in referee, he's turtled up. I had like, like my leg just went right over his back and into a hook. Like it just seemed he was so tired. He practically just gave up. Like it's, it's kind of ridiculous, but, um, 
yeah, I just took his back. He didn't let me get the second hook. I don't even think I tried to get the second hook. I just got two underhooks and rolled to my side, locked up the halfback, and then um, locked in the choke, and then got my second hook. So I went from halfback to renegade choke to getting the full mount, uh, back mount, um, and then it was all she wrote from there. He didn't stand a chance. He had his chin in, um, but I was just pulling his head off his body, um, and then eventually I sunk it in all the way under his neck, and <laughs> that was all she wrote. <laughs> Safe to say, man, this easily is the biggest win of your professional career so far. How does it compare to other wins you've had? Like, run me through your emotions after you actually got the win. Um, it was great, man, to be able to win in front of Dana White and, like, you know, all the people who I've been just so ready to show my style to. Um, and then to get to hear Dana actually appreciate my style. I, I watched the post-fight interview or a press conference, excuse me. Um, Dana said he likes my style. He likes my attitude and things like that are like what I've been waiting on, you know, because it's not like I finished this guy any different than anyone else. Like I finished him the same way I finished everyone else. So, you know, like it's, you know, like obviously I'm doing the right things. Um, and um, it's just, it's just amazing for, to be recognized by the guys that, you need to recognize you. Yeah, no doubt. And there's a lot made about your height uh, and just your your overall size for this this division. Six foot four. The only other fighter that's that tall in the division is the champion Israel Adesanya. Do you feel like you're just going to be a stylistic nightmare for a lot of these middleweights moving forward? I would imagine. I'm pretty sure I could take down every middleweight, even 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 Izzy. Like, I don't really take people down the regular way. I'm not like. Sh- blast double legging and single legs and getting elbowed in the head you know I'm, I'm really good at hiding my head and um creeping around to places people didn't realize i was going um, i'm not afraid to shoot for a takedown um as well as i'm not afraid to keep things standing so i definitely think i'm going to be a huge threat um coming into the ufc and it's going to be obvious when i go and um assassinate this kid in a couple weeks whoever it may be um but you know originally i was a welterweight you know, I was uh, I was making welterweight. Uh, and that's where I initially wanted to be. Um, but it's just I've, I going into the UFC, they hardly ever give you full camps, especially like being new. You know, so it'd be re- it was, it's just really hard for me to do that on a short, you know, two week, 13 days, uh, things like that notice. So, <clears throat> yeah, I'm just going to adapt to the middleweight division and. Uh, and should just take advantage of my length and my size advantage over all these other guys and just destroy. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get paid, man. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Well, you're right around the corner, man, from, from the big paydays. There's no doubt about that. Now, is there a chance that once you get into the UFC and you're actual, you know, rostered fighter that you might make the move down to welterweight if you're getting those full camps and you can cut the weight the right way? Um, Absolutely. I mean, if, if I can get some full camps, like, when I say full camp, I just mean more than six weeks. Give me a month and a half uh, to prepare for a fight. Absolutely. Um, I can make welterweight, and I would love to. Um, now, middleweight's a way easier cut, and the guys aren't bigger than me still. Um, I still would like as many advantages as I can get <laughs> over these guys. This is not a this is not an easy thing to do, you know, fighting people. So you definitely have to not just have advantages. You have to realize what they are and, and use them. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, a lot's been made, too, about James Kraus, him in your corner. And clearly he's a phenomenal fighter, but, you know, he's a great coach, too. Tell me a little bit about, you know, what it's like having him in your corner as your coach. And is, is, are you going to be at glory moving forward? Like for this camp leading up to this Fury FC fight, are you going to be strictly with James getting that work in before the fight? Uh, no, I'll never strictly just be with James. James and my coach uh, teamed up uh, to help me get as good as I need to get. James knows for a fact how I need to be in order to be successful in this sport. And my coach knows exactly how I am. You know what I mean? So them two working together is exactly what I need to uh, get to this next level. Now I do plan on going to glory a lot more. Um, Me and him just started talking about as soon as I got back, trying to plan for me to be out there more often. Um, And my coach is totally on board as well. Um, But no, Kraus is phenomenal. Kraus has a Kraus has a perspective that 
um, that's very much needed from a guy like me who's, you know, I haven't, like, I've trained with UFC people, but, like, no one else from my gym has gone to the UFC before me. So I definitely still have to continue to rise and get better. And Krause is, Krause is giving me all the advice and all the knowledge and all the looks and everything I need to feel like I've gotten better and feel like I'm ready for for this next step in my career. Now, Fury FC 53 is November the 14th. And you said earlier, you still don't have an opponent. They're going to be matchmaking you uh, and, and hopefully coming up with an opponent here really soon. What is that like to to know that you have a fight that could change your life and you don't even know who the opponent is yet? Story of my life. <laughs> That's the story of my life, man. They, uh, I trust my management, you know what I mean? And my management haven't put me in a situation that's for their own gain you know everything they've done has been to help me get to where I need to go and where they want me to go and where they believe I can go so it's all good it's not like it's not like they're going to be able to bring somebody you know to fight me that's able to win like even if they look like they could win like if they're not world class they're not about to beat me you know it might be a hard fight but I'm going to the UFC, like some regular guy in Fury is not about to come beat me. Yeah, and, and we talked a little bit before we went live here, too, about uh, your boy Evan Cutts. He's actually in the main event against Chris Curtis, and you didn't, you weren't aware of that. Is there is there a chance that, you know, you might be, you know, training with him leading up to this fight? I mean, it would make sense if you guys could work it out, right? Yeah, I don't know much about his opponent. I'll probably check him out after we get finished talking, but uh, yeah, Evan Cutts is a great friend of mine. I have a lot of respect for him. We've trained together a lot in the past. Uh, I, I will reach out to him and see if he could use my body or anything um, for himself. But he's a, he's a, he's a big grappler. Um, as a fighter, he's huge on grappling. So I probably won't necessarily use him for my camp um, just because I grapple all the time. I, I need some people to come and try and, you know, punch my face up. But um, yeah, no, Evan, I, I look forward to seeing that fight. And um, he's a title holder, too, if I'm not mistaken, right? This is a title fight. Yeah, it is. Uh, I know he lost his title at Cage Fury. Uh, okay. I, yeah, I think he still is the champ for, for this promotion. Okay. Yeah, no, that's exciting, man. I, actually, I haven't seen him fight live, so that'll be really cool. I'm going to reach out to him and let him know. And, and hopefully, uh, you know, that everything works out with my fight and I'll actually get an opponent on time and have a fight, too. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, no, no doubt. Well, you definitely deserve it. Uh, for my money, I think you deserve the contract uh, after your performance at Contender Series beating Shantae Barnes. But, hey, it is what it is, man. Uh, for anyone that wants to watch this fight whenever it does get made, you can check it out on UFC Fight Pass. Again, November the 14th, Fury FC 53. Joseph Holmes versus whoever. Whoever they decide wants to get it, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, whoever who's uh, next in line and ready and who can I can – prove that i'm ready it can't just be you know shanti was good and he had a decent record he was six and one you know but still after assassinating him you know practically effortlessly you know first rounds yeah you know first rounds the first round both guys are fresh it's not like easy to kill a guy who's fresh you know but to just destroy him you know that should uh you know i just need someone who i can prove you know when they see me destroy him they'll be like okay yeah he's ready that guy was good I can't wait. I definitely won't be uh, missing that fight. Uh, again, Joseph, always a pleasure to talk to you, my man. Before I let you go, I want to give you the floor. Tell people where to follow you on social media. And if you have anyone to thank, the floor is yours. Yeah, go follow me on every social media outlet at Ugly Man Joe. I'm big on Facebook at Joseph Holmes. Uh, and you can also catch me playing some video games, Ripping Warzone or Apex Legends at Ugly Man Joe Gaming, uh, which is my Facebook gaming channel. Um, I want to thank my, my management for getting me on the line with you you're amazing and iridium sports management agency is amazing as well um and then thanks to my coaches uh professor and james for you know being dope and uh just helping me be ready for everything man appreciate you man for your time too oh hey it's it's always my pleasure you know that look forward to doing this again soon man yeah ryan talk to you soon bro be safe <laughs>